Hey, NerdSync here, and I just finished watching the two hour long live keynote from Apple in San Francisco, where they announce uh, at this time in the year, all their new software and some new hardware. And I thought I'd make this quick video for you guys so you can have an update on all the interesting things that Apple are doing and some of the things that you'll see on, on your phone and your iPad and your Mac uh, coming out later in the year. Let's get started. So over that two hours, there was a lot of information to take in, a lot of new features that Apple are bringing out. I just want to focus on some of the interesting ones. Uh, so starting with Apple TV, <clears throat> if you have an Apple TV, um, they've announced Apple TV Plus. So looks like Apple are going to start competing with the likes of Netflix and Amazon. Uh, so they're going to be bringing out their own series like Star Trek. It's called For All Mankind. Uh, so yeah, you can expect if you're on Apple TV more kind of uh, content, specific content coming on that platform. Apple have already started developing their Apple TV for gaming, but they're taking this further now with uh, Apple Arcade. So now actually supporting the PS4 and the Xbox controller, which people are very happy about. Uh, we can see probably a lot more development on the gaming side for Apple on the TV, which is quite exciting. Next up, Apple Watch. So Apple have brought out some new uh, straps for the watch and they've also released details on the new operating system, Watch OS 6. So as usual, they bring out a few new uh, watch faces and their software and they're bringing a specific app store now to the watch. So you can actually browse for apps and download them directly on the watch. That's a new feature. And they're bringing some new cool apps as well to the watch, uh, which are normally available on your phone, like um, calculator. And they've even got things for like, if you want to calculate a tip when you're in a rush restaurant or splitting a bill, they've got kind of um, features for that. You can now make voice memos on your watch and they've got more fitness features like trends over kind of the last three months, how your fitness has been, and then comparing that to how it's been over the last year. And they have now a decibel meter as well. So if you um, work or you go into a noisy environment, it will actually alert you so you can actually protect uh, your ears, uh, which degrade over a longer period of time, it's harder to kind of uh, monitor that. So that's quite cool from Apple. Over to the iPhone now, and Apple have been working more on speed. Uh, for this iteration of iOS 13, you can open apps quicker. They reduce the file size of apps. So when you download them or update them, they will download much quicker. Uh, but in terms of new features on iOS 13, um, they have introduced dark mode now. So if you have a MacBook, you'll know about dark mode from um, Mac OS Mojave. Uh, so that's coming to iPhone. This next feature has been available for a long time on Android, but now on an iPhone, you can actually uh, swipe from key to key to type in messages and they're calling it Quick Path. So they brought that to Apple. Uh, they redesigned from the ground up. Uh, it's not really, they just added a feature to, to Reminders app. Uh, so instead of just having a list of reminders, say your inbox and then a bunch of reminders, you can actually um, have a reminder and then have a set of um, reminders ta linked to that one reminder, so nesting, which is uh, really good. Also with reminders, you can actually tag people in it. So if there's a date and time set with that to-do, then it will actually text that person and remind them uh, about that to-do if they're tagged in it. So that's a pretty cool feature as well. Other than that, just to list off a few other features, they've kind of developed the Maps app. Um, you know how when you make an account sometimes you have that option to sign in with Google or Facebook while well, Apple are now offering that and they're offering it with kind of more encryption and safety um, probably in light of kind of the bad publicity that Facebook got recently so that's something that Apple are now offering uh, I did see some new memojis with this different the star styles so that's quite exciting I managed to take a quick screenshot I'll put that in the video so you can see it um, with photos and videos now you can actually edit them with with quite a lot more features. With videos, you can kind of rotate them and you can do basic video editing, like uh, you know, color, saturation, contrast, all those kind of things. So that's, that's quite exciting. And they've redeveloped the Photos app so you can pinch to zoom on it and it, it will um, merge kind of duplicate, duplicate photographs that you take uh, to make a more kind of seamless experience, uh, more enjoyable experience on the Photos app. So that's quite cool. In terms of peripherals for the iPhone, the AirPods, uh, probably one of the coolest features 
that they've announced with that is um, announce messages. So if you have AirPods in, then you can have a setting where Siri will automatically just read out your messages to you when they come in live and then you can respond to them live without doing anything. So that's cool. I'm not sure how distracting that'll be though when you're listening to, you know, Keith and Apart. But um, audio sharing as well. So if you have two sets of AirPods, I'm led to believe then you can actually connect them and watch something on one device with two sets of AirPods. I think that's how, how I understood it, if I'm not wrong. And if you have a HomePod, I don't know how many people have one of those, but if you have one of those home speakers, Wi-Fi speakers, then you can do something called handoff, where say you're listening to something on your iPhone, you come into your home, if you put your iPhone near to that HomePod, then you can hand off and continue listening uh, in your home on your loudspeaker. So over to iPad now, and Apple are, are making efforts now to separate the mobile world and the tablet world. So. And at the moment, the uh, operating system that the iPad works off is iOS, but now they're calling it iPad OS. So they want to kind of separate that and put efforts into making the iPad its own platform in its own right, uh, which it is. And so lots of new features come into the, the new operating system of iPad. And just to list a few um, in terms of the multitasking and making it closer to the Mac where you can have an app expose area you can see and all the apps that are open and all the different spaces you have and the multitasking that you can have is is much more powerful so they showed like having multiple notes alongside each other then you could maybe swipe and have another space where you're writing an email but next to it you could have your inbox when you're looking for other content and the clicking and drag aspect of that and then they've really improved the gestures so you can just use one finger now to kind of move the cursor and then you can use three fingers and different gestures to, to select that text, copy it, paste it, cut it, undo. Uh, so that's much easier. They've, they've kind of uh, caught up uh, on, on that side of things. And something quite exciting about the iPad is now you can actually plug in uh, SD cards and hard drives and thumb drives directly in and using iCloud Drive uh, access that. And they even talked about DSLRs plugging a camera in directly into your iPad, opening up Lightroom and importing photographs straight in. So that's that's quite mind blowing um, from a photographer's point of view that they could actually do live editing on nice, uh, you know, lightweight iPad that's more portable than, you know, perhaps a MacBook Pro and, uh, and edit that way. So uh, very exciting there. Uh, I think they've, they've been very reluctant to do that because of security, but they've, they've, they've found a way of doing that. So that's something I'm, I'm very excited about. Up until now, I've never really used my iPad for anything apart from content consumption because I can't import media that easily onto my iPad, but that's something I, I'd possibly consider now. They didn't mention it, but you could see it on the screen in the background, you know, you could even unzip files and stuff. So they're really making that gap closer from the iPad to, to, to the Mac. And uh, that moves us swiftly over to Mac. Apple have launched a brand new Mac. It's the Mac Pro. Uh, it's kind of an update to the, the trash can Mac Pro that hasn't been updated for many years. And this is for the, the super duper pro users. Starts at $6,000 and uh, it's expandable. It's, it's just mad specs. I mean, they were showing um, like three 8K movies being played at the same time in full resolution. Um, and then in Logic Pro, they've updated that app. That's for making music. They had like a thousand uh, tracks playing at the same time. So it was unbelievable performance. They're calling it the, tree, the cheese grater. It looks, it looks a bit like a cheese grater. It's a bit strange the way it looks, but uh, so be it. Alongside the Mac Pro, they're launching a brand new monitor. So it's a 32 inch, uh, not HDR, but XDR, extreme dynamic resolution. So they're really, taking it uh, you know, a step forward and uh, they were comparing it to this Sony monitor uh, that the kind of industry professionals use. I think it's $41,000. So that's the kind of you know, numbers they're playing with and they're launching this new monitor for 6K, uh, $6,000. And, uh, but this, the stand for it is $1,000 on its own. So yeah, it's not really for the, the consumer as such, but uh, more of the professional, but uh, look very cool. I'm sure it looked very cool on some people's desks, but probably won't go on my shopping list. Okay, over to Mac now, and they are launching their new software as they do every year, uh, and they're calling it Mac OS Catalina. Uh, so they're kind of going underwater now and have, they'll have uh, their themes based on that. And in terms of features, they're splitting 
uh, iTunes up so it's no longer one app that does three things they're splitting it up so that you've got Apple Music, uh, podcasts and TV so there's going to be three separate apps and then in terms of updating your phone you do that all through Finder now so when you plug your phone in it'll just you can open it up in Finder and you can update your phone and sync your library and all that kind of stuff so that was just kind of uh, separating and having a bit more clarity uh, so that you can go to the app to do what you want to do. Sidecar is a new app that they are releasing for Mac OS uh, and that allows you natively through Apple to use your iPad as a second display so there are already apps that can do this but this is Apple um, integrating it natively into their system so you can do it wired and you can do it wirelessly which is a really cool feature. They also say that any third party app like Photoshop etc uh, if they have an iPad app then it will work uh, quite well so you can use your Apple Pencil so it'll be good for designers. I'm going to try it with video editing see how I get on and uh, maybe I'll make a video if it's any good. They got a new feature called Find My, uh, which is a play on Find My iPhone, but for Mac as well. So um, even if your Mac is asleep in your bag, but if you misplace it, um, it will actually share a low power Bluetooth connection with uh, devices around. So you can actually find uh, your Mac if you happen to misplace it. And they've got new security measures that if um, your Mac is stolen, then you can actually lock it so that it can't be used in any way or form by the person who steals it until you um, put in some code. So that was quite cool. Apple also bringing screen time to Mac so that the same features you have on iOS, uh, you can control your usage and have a look at your usage on the Mac. And Project Catalyst, um, more for the coders out there, not so interesting to me, but um, it will kind of leak down in the sense that these are new features that Apple are giving to coders that allow them to very quickly turn their iOS and iPad apps uh, into Mac, full, full Mac apps. Uh, so um, that'll be quite good because uh, in the future we can probably see the apps that we like on the iPad that we don't see on the Mac come to the Mac very quickly and uh, we might see gaming kind of take off more on the Mac in the future too. During this keynote Minecraft actually came on and uh, with augmented reality showed this whole Minecraft map across the whole stage and they were uh, you know kind of standing inside the map they were making so really quite impressive where we gaming and augmented reality is going. So that was the WWDC 2019. Apple released all those details in the summer. Uh, the developers then can get coding, get their apps ready for the autumn for us, and that's when the new software usually comes up as an update on our phone, so we can look forward to that later on in the year. In terms of the Mac Pro, they didn't actually give details specifically on when that's gonna be released. It might be ready now to order, uh, but I guess that only affects a percentage of the, of the world out there who want to order that very high spec equipment. Uh, but anyway, that was my take on the uh, conference. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Nerds and out.